I was sitting at the inside of the arch of the Dakota building, and it was dark, it was windy. Jose, the doorman, was out uh, along the sidewalk. And here's another odd thing that happened. I was at an angle where I could see Central Park West and 72nd, and I see this limousine pull up. And as you know, there's probably hundreds of limousines that turn up uh, Central Park West in the evening. But I knew that was his. And I said, this is it. And I stood up. The limousine pulled up. The door opened. The rear left door opened. Yoko got out. John was far behind, say 20 feet, when he got out. I nodded to Yoko when she walked by me. She nodded back? No, <clears throat> she didn't. Um, and I don't mean to be so clinical about this, but I've told it a number of times. I hope you understand. John came out, and he looked at me, and, and I think he recognized, here's the fella that I signed the album earlier. And uh, he walked past me. I took five steps toward the street, turned, withdrew my charter arms, 38, and fired five shots into his back. All in his back? All in his back. Never saw it coming? He never saw anything coming, Larry. It was a very quick, it was a rough thing. What, uh, had you shot that weapon before? That weapon, no. Um, I didn't even know if the bullets were going to work. And when they worked, I remember thinking, they're working, they're working. I was worried that the plane in the baggage compartment, the humidity had ruined them. And I remember thinking, they're working. What did Yoko do? She, naturally, and I can't blame her, she dashed around the stair area. I don't know if it's still there at the Dakota today, but she just, you know, ran for cover, which is what anyone would do. Mm -hmm. John, uh, according to to what I've been told, stumbled up the stairs, and then I saw her come back around and then go up to the stairs, and then she cradled his body. 